All these black folks are talking about they want freedom and they want dignity. If you listen to them carefully, we can give them what they want and still control them by saying to black people, if you do this, if you become sterilized at a certain age, we will give you so much money. We'll give you so much money. Now, don't, don't argue that because, see, something I think, uh, again, we are, we are led to believe. We have been led to believe, and this is where the mental side, mental side is those who got it on the wall around here. And uh, when I walk down the hall, don't identify me. Don't say, hey, Bobby, because I want these white folks to know that my name up on that wall that y'all got around here. Uh, uh, mental side is defined as the, system, the deliberate and systematic destruction of a group's mind with the ultimate aim, with the ultimate objective being the extirpation or the extermination of that group. That's mental side. This deliberate and systematic destruction of a group's mind. A group's mind with the ultimate objective being the extermination of that group. And so if you begin to look at what Skinner and all of these, and I'm talking to you all because most of you are psychologists too, this is what psychology really means. Anytime you see things on TV, psychologists have had something to do with it in terms of advertising. Anytime you see those projections on who's going to win an election, the moment that CBS at 6 o'clock at CBS at the polls closed, psychologists worked out those statistical formulas. See, uh, back in uh, 1925, um, uh, what's his name, who was uh, one of the first behaviorists who they caught um, on, a de on the top of a desk with a student um, and, and, and fired him. Um, what's his name? He said, give me any... Give me any student, any child, and I'll make it whatever I want. Watson, who was the first man. Watson, when they fired him from the University of Chicago, what Watson did when they started J. Walker Thompson's advertising agency, a psychologist, became the largest in the world. You see, I'm saying to you, when you start talking about psychology, it's one thing you might hear this narrow thing here at junior college. It's another thing altogether for whites. It was a psychologist who started it, what is now the CIA. Only it was called then OSS in the Second World War. Before the Second World War, the United States didn't have that type of arm, that type of intelligence arm. I'm just showing you that what, what, how much you have to learn. And don't let anybody fool you in this, this field you're in that is irrelevant. Because you're talking about people's minds. You're talking about influencing people. In fact, you're talking about determining their very existence. And as Harold said, I said, yes, I do say that. If you control minds, you control behind. I don't care what people say. And so one of the problems we have, so in, in, mo in moving on to this, let me, let me just give you a couple other things that you should look at. Um, about this. Now, if we look, if we look at a student, or we look at a university, it becomes very clear, Atlanta University, Atlanta Junior College system here, that one of the realities is our condition. And this is where blacks sort of get confused. This is where we get confused. Our true condition. One of our true conditions is, Oppression, exploited, women are exploited, da 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 da. No, 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 no. We are what? Enslaved. 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 And the reason we're enslaved is because all of our life sustaining institutions are controlled by whites. That's slavery. That's slavery. I will guarantee you, there's nobody in this room can tell me where, the, uh, where you turn your water on at or where you turn your lights off at. I ain't talking about in your house. Because they can turn your lights off without even coming in your house. All of our life-sustaining institutions are controlled by another group. That is slavery. That is slavery. Now, I'm not telling you all, you all of this to, to depress you. You know what I mean? You know, I'm talking about because you keep hearing this type of stuff, and I, mean, I believe that we are stronger than other group of people. Well, we have been led to believe that we are super people. We are not super people. We are simply just not utilizing, utilizing the appropriate methods to address this problem. Most of the time, they get us because we personalize it. We personalize it because we have a, good, a white friend. Uh, what are you talking about? Whites treat me better than blacks. Why they ripped off my TV last night? <laughs> you know, uh, 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 you know uh, we equate ripping off a TV with ripping off your mother. You know, now, let me give you an example. I was just talking about it, but this might be the first time y'all have heard it, but I was at the uh, Social Workers Convention Friday in Washington. Some of us were here, some of these students were here too from here. And I was pointing out that on the plane, the day before that, a sister I talked to some black students in Chicago, and a student had pointed out that a sister stood up and said, well, you're talking about these black men and black women. What about this? And told me that Kareem Jabbar had divorced his wife and is now living with this 23-year-old white girl, Kareem Jabbar. You all know Abdul Kareem Jabbar, the mad, mad 
militant, you know, kind of. I get Sports Illustrated, this is my Sports Illustrated, 10 pages of Jabal and this white girl. 10 pages. And this 33 year old man says that this young girl has taught him more than his parents, more than his teachers, more than his coaches, more than his trainers, all in the space of two nights. You didn't even talk about, uh, 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 uh. I mean, you know, uh, you know, what I'm suggesting here, no, no, what I'm suggesting here, that if you look at this, here's some, and I'm, I'm clearing up because I want to get into some question answer. Here's some things we're going to look at that are threatening. Here's the most threatening thing, yes. Harold got into it about black and Africa. The question becomes, what is a black person? Now, we've been having some deep arguments about this over the country, deep discussions about this around the country, quietly. But one of the problems is, and this is one of the problems, see, back in the 60s, one of my students who was Fred Hampton used to ask me, interrupt my class all the time, because we had these free classes, and call it community university. And he used to ask, why are we like we are? Why is history demanding too much of us? That was his famous, say, why are black folks like we are? Is history demanding? And I used to tell him, and, I, you know, and I'm going back to that now, because I've gotten too far from it. It's very simple. We are in a race war. And we're the only one who don't know it. <laughs> Not only that we don't want to know it, we don't want to even know what race we are. Seriously, give us a thought. Don't laugh about it. We are in a race war, and we refuse to accept it. All the statistics Jenny gave you, why do blacks just happen to show up? Why do blacks just happen to show up like this I just gave you? It just happened that way. Every time you look up, every you go all over the world, blacks on the bottom and whites on top, it just happens that way. Hell, if it were just happening by saying, look, it defies every known law of, of probability that exists. The laws of probability say that if it was not color, somewhere in this world, somewhere in this world, you'll find black folks over whites. Somewhere in this world. Use your own textbook. The law of probability. They, they tell you science is objective and neutral. Then apply it to the black condition and watch how it go haywire. <laughs> Goes crazy. Apply that same scientific methodology that you are learning here to the black condition and explain it to me. No, 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 no. Science is not objective and it's not neutral. The way you develop science, the two of us get together and say, look, this is going to be white. Okay? This is going to be, this is going to be black. You know, and if you don't accept it, I'll kill you. You know, uh, I mean, that becomes science. Uh, if you don't accept it, you get kicked out of school. You see what I'm talking about? And, and I always tell this, forgive me, I always tell this famous one, about, I'm just throwing some things out. You see what you do is, let me tell you a trick. Here's a trick. If you really believe everything I'm saying, like many of you probably do, it's crazy. Take the position that I'm not crazy and prove it. If you really believe white people are not like I say they are, take the position that they are and prove it. That's called, by the way, the null hypothesis. You know, you know that's, that's, just, that's the way I'm doing things. In other words, I'm saying to you, the one way, and the danger we're finding now is that I go around the country, brothers and sisters coming up, man, I read and I heard you, and Bobby, you said that. I don't need for you to tell me what I said. What do you say? Right. <laughs> we need you to begin to think. We really need you to begin to think. No one has ever asked us to think before. Think about that. Think about it. No one has ever asked us to think about anything. In fact, we have been told all that. Who told you to think? <laughs> <laughs> Who asked you to think? <laughs> You see, that is a type of mental side. But anyway, I'm saying to you that, okay, if we look at it, if we begin to look at that, just that one thing about the racial, the racial question, about the fact that science, science, I always tell this about how you can influence people no matter what they see. Let me tell you how you can do it. I always tell the story about Notre Dame. It's the best example I know. Notre Dame about five years ago had five black boys playing for them. Five on the basketball team. Five playing for them. And Notre Dame was losing, and it was on TV. And as Notre Dame was losing, all of a sudden they started winning. And the, the opposing team went down the floor, shot a ball, and Notre Dame, the brother grabbed it, and started a fast break. And the announcer, who was pro-Irish, pro-Notre Dame, went crazy. Here come the Irish, here come the Irish, here come the Irish. Five black boys coming down the court. Five black boys coming down the court, and they're yelling Irish. Here come the Irish. Now, your mind, your mind accepts that. Your mind don't even see any contradiction in that. 
<laughs> Any country thing. I always say to sister, sister always say, see, these black men are nothing because look at these, all these white girls together. But guess what? 90% of the white women in the black community, the black women brought them in there. They're friends from the work and they're all that up because you can't go to that community. <laughs> Let's stop by Pascal's for a drink. <laughs> and she goes in there and wipes out Pascal. I ain't gonna bring her back. You know, you don't have to worry about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> See, mental Mental side. The same thing Wilson brings out all the time. Brothers who marry white people or sisters who marry white people do never choose the person they marry. They never choose them. They are always chosen. Now, if you don't want to believe that, I'll prove the end of it. Any brother who disproved that, let's go to downtown Atlanta right now, pick out the white girl you want, and walk up to him and say, hey, I want you. <laughs> <laughs> well, just do that. Now, any sister, she can walk up, she might say, F you and walk on the way. But you ain't going to walk up to no white girl and say, hey, you look nice. No, no. Always, you are chosen. You are chosen. You see what I'm talking about? This is natural. This is a simple thing. Don't have to get real complex about it. See, it, 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 ain't, it is so simple. It is so simple. Now let me get to the final thing and then I'm going to give you some, some suggestions. We keep believing that somehow black people in this country are in a very poor condition. Do you realize that black people in this country probably have a standard of living higher than 95% of the world's population? Do you know that? As bad as off as we are. In other words, the black gross national product is larger is the seventh largest one in the world in this country that means the money all of us earn and all collectively is the seventh largest economy in the world in fact it's right behind india india has two billion dollars more than we do three billion dollars they get 60 62 to 59 india is two is two is, is three billion ahead of us, but India has 500 million people. We have 30 or less. 30 million people and a, and a gross national product of what? Of 59 billion dollars. Okay, now another lesson. Blacks keep insisting these simple things that do not stand up on the end investigation. That is that white people will do anything for money. And not all you all, y'all you choosing up. I already got condition of that. Twice, it's not, it's not raised. They'll do anything for money because that, if it's to their advantage to do it for money, we'll listen carefully. Have you ever stopped to think that white folks print money? <laughs> Did that ever cross your mind? You all think that dollar just grows upon your pillow? <laughs> <laughs> they print that money. They print, but not only do they print that money, they have six little white boys in London who every day says, uh, where well, I think the dollar will be worth 35 cents a day. <laughs> Let's make it 69 tomorrow. Let's play hell with silver. Five eight a day and six dollars tomorrow. You all really believe silver? So men are not making a decision on how much silver is worth? That's it. That's the power. To define money. Not money itself. We don't do anything for money. We don't do anything for that little money. And guess what? At one time, believe it or not, we were money. I'll give you three blacks for what? That equal land. They made us money. Even this analysis about, you know, about unemployment. Everybody say, well, the problem is unemployment. It's too many of us unemployed. Listen to me carefully. If we really, if you really want full black employment, let us get about something. See, I contend that just because you're unemployed don't mean you should be out of work. You see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Just because you don't have no job, there's a lot of work for you to do. Mm -hmm. If we ever get that mentality, they'll give us jobs. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you can believe it. Do you realize how much brain power is sitting around watching as the world turns without us? You know what I mean? Can you, you know what I mean? Do you understand that all of this brain power? Do you know they allow you to sit up here and go to school? That's how arrogant they are in, in lights. Look here. Look here. Look here. I mean, look at it. Think about this for the first time. Look how arrogant they are. Let us come in here together. Listen to that fool Bobby Wright. <laughs> Have you ever thought of that? How arrogant they are. Let us come together. No, no, they ain't nothing gonna help. No, they ain't nothing come together. And we keep having these conferences. <laughs> keep having them. And nothing happens. So they keep having them. When they become, I'll tell you something. I will know, and you will know, when this becomes relevant. They'll stop it. They'll stop it. 